Well, the tenant registration does that. But we don't have anything. We get calls from tenants that live in conditions that are unsafe, that are uh, hard for us to go into the property to inspect uh, because we don't have the the approval of the landlord. You can go into somebody's residence with the tenant's consent. Anywhere the tenant's live, they can consent for you to go for an inspection. Wait, could you repeat that yes. a little louder, please? The tenant can certainly invite a code officer into the tenant's abode to look at where they live, and anywhere that they can go in that building, they can bring the code officer. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yes. Now, is he, is he okay to act up the code officer? Code officer is able to act on anything that he or she sees where they observe it in a place where they were lawfully entitled to be. So, I have a question. So you have a landowner who owns the property, who is not caring for that property, whether it's the grass, whether it's the weeds, whether it's dead trees. Are you saying now that the borough has the has the permission to either make them do it or we do it and they pay for it? Explain. Well, you're asking a few different questions. Lori actually chases and it does a good job of going after the grass and yes, weed she does. violators. She does. Um, <coughs> and, and you we, can, we also go, we, we also, if we can't get the property owners to do it or if they're absentee landlords, we have an ordinance in place now that states that I send public works or I send a company onto the property and then we, those charges are passed on to the property owner. And um, normally we get our monies because we take them to the magistrate. Okay. So we do do that. But we have not in the past. Um, our code enforcement officer, you're going to have to talk to him because he is not, um, does not feel comfortable going right. into properties that he does not have the consent of the property owner. So that's going to have to, have to be something that we yeah, talk to. And we've had our things we need to discuss to get yeah. clarification to him before. Right. Um, right. Because uh, if if the property owner lets us in, but or if we're called for, say, a water leak or that type thing, um, which is what right. happened at one four, uh, at, you know, at a property in Terra Street, and then we found the home to be uninhabitable, the fire department was there, the police department were there, and then they called us. So, um, yeah, there's two things we can do. Lori and I can talk to the code officer and let them know what the extent of their rights and obligations are under the Fourth Amendment. Uh, secondly, I can get you some samples that dovetail the rent, the tenant registration ordinance that you already have. There are ordinances which, and again, it's not going over the clock, the scope and kind of overly intrusive, but maybe once every three years you do a triennial and you can kind of hit your whole borough if you split it up and frankly the size of your borough. Maybe you can do it one year, two year, three year. You can kind of have a program where all the landlords know, A, they have to all the all in free and register themselves every year, and then two, they um, will be on a kind of periodic basis subject to a general walkthrough, at least a cursory inspection by the code officer to make sure the basic health, welfare, safety features in the building are in place. And you don't need individualized uh, probable cause to do those sorts of periodic inspections. To do inspections where it's an individual complaint or an individual issue, yes, you do. And you and I can talk to the code officer about the circumstances under which they're allowed to go into a tenant's. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's a if it's a dead dead tree, he doesn't really need permission to go onto the property, correct? Because he can see it. Well, right across the street, even, right? Sometimes, yeah, and that's a different. You're picking on your favorite enforcement yeah. topics, the tree. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for trees. Because it um, could be my house that that tree lands on. Trees are. I funny know. issues sometimes. Sometimes they they only become. The government's problem, if they're truly kind of an imminent danger of falling, then a code officer can cite on it. Otherwise, that's a private property issue between the two neighboring property owners as to whether 
can force somebody to cut a tree down or what happens when it right. falls, who's liable for it, and all that kind of stuff. I have a couple dead tree, the dead trees mm -hmm. um, enforcement letters out right now mm -hmm. um, that the trees are totally dead. But if they're not, and they're just a nuisance, because we have trees that are nuisances that scratch other people's houses, that leaves come down and they're in their, in their um, down spots and those type things, then that's between the property owners. These are fine trees with no needles. Mm -hmm. None. Zip. Not. <laughs> and just to let Any you other know, things? You know, I'm sorry. These are pine trees that are really high, and the neighbors that live in their property, they have little fire pits in the summer. That's fire hazard. And the trees are so high that they could fall in any of our houses. It's fire hazard well. only if it's underneath the tree. If it's mm -hmm. 10 feet away, they meet the compliance. But it the is wind anyways. blows. I, the wind's yeah, blowing. That's you. how the ordinance is written. Yep. I mean, I'm the one that comes out with the police to enforce it. And yep. We look at them case by case. Mm -hmm. As far as that. The, the other thing, thanks. The other thing to remind folks is, is that you know we have these right to know laws where people can seek information from. The one thing folks should know is that complaints that you don't have to worry that your neighbor is going to write us a note and say, tell me who told on me, who narked on me. We don't have to, under the law, where we protect because you don't want that. You want that protection. So if the complaints that you make, we try to talk about individual cases in public, and we encourage folks to make anonymous complaints through Lori's office. A, something to be done about it, and B, that you don't feel, you know, at risk of retribution or whatever mm -hmm. for, for doing so. And if you think the tree is dead, because I send a lot of notifications regarding right. those. So if you think it's dead, then I can do something, so just let me know. Yeah. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Real quick, under your thing that Joe brought up, uh, and I know Tom was talking about you know, what it sounds like some people are thinking about this, and we went through this before. There's a lot of renters property in this town that people do take care of, mm -hmm. but there is a decent amount that aren't. And under the fire end, and I'm sure under the police and EMS is in here, there's a lot of houses we go into that we see that are very bad. So, you know, we're trying not to pick on the ones that do do the job right, but. We do want to make it safe. In one incident, a small, quick incident we had was an incident on Byron Road of a fire. And somebody, yeah. And I can tell you, Chief, that chiming in on another community that, that I represent a few years ago when they brought in the heightened landlord tenant rules, registration, inspection rules on that. It was actually the good landlords that were the biggest proponents of it because the bad landlords were bringing them down. Yes. Last time, it was totally uh, awesome. so I know, the natural reaction, you, you know, a lot of times you get a knee-jerk you know, reaction from the business the landlord community. You're, you know, over-regulating this and doing all this stuff. I can tell you, the number of communities, and not one in particular, I'm not going to out on TV, but, you know, that they were more, the, the good landlords overwhelmed the bad landlords. Mm -hmm. they, 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 you're, they, you're bringing down the value of their total, if you bring down the value of the total building stock, you bring down their rent. You bring down the value of their rent. And I, I think that's what stopped it last time. Was I, I sat in this room, and it was all good landlords. Mm -hmm. And you were all pitching. Too. And none of them wanted it. And they and they were demanding that council not do it. And I think that's when it died. And uh, you might have so, a different mindset. I, I'll give it to you. I'll circulate. You can take a look at what you want to do. And as far as um, you know, one one community, it's you know. I think it's $50. The, um, our building inspector, they, they do these in many towns. Some some of it, that's all they do, like in uh, McKee's Rocks, that's all they do, they, they do the inspections. They charge $45 to do an inspection. So, you know, for us it would be just the cost of $45 that they would charge us. Which gets passed on. 
But you can pass that on in the application fee process, so it's neutral. You're not allowed to make right. money on like a hidden tax. Right. Just, just watch what you've done. Forty-five dollars here, fifty dollars there, forty-five, fifty. Well, okay. They all add up. Well, to the good landlords, sense. to the good landlords. Meanwhile, what you have them next to are not necessarily just bad landlords, but bad property owners. The conversation needs to be about property ownership and taking responsibility for your property, whether you le whether you lease it to someone or whether you live in it yourself. Being responsible for your own property, picking up things when, they, when, when there's debris in your front yard, cutting your grass. You know, you ask, what can you do for your community? Keep your yard nice. Well, that's Clean why, up. That's why you have do rules, the things. You, yes, and we have lots of rules. We have lots of rules. We have the International Building Maintenance Standards. Our attorney has now explained that if a tenant finds that his landlord isn't doing the job, that the tenant can bring them in all the way inside the house and solve this problem. To areas where the tenant to areas are where the tenant is permitted to go, correct? Okay, did I is the tenant uh, protect from any repercussions from the landlord? Good question. Our code office works for us. Doesn't even need to tell the landlord. That depends, and I don't want to have our, yeah. our code officer getting Fourth Amendment lessons through, you know, commentary or public meeting. Correct. We'll talk to the code enforcement to officer directly about his ability to inspect and do things that need to to keep the standards. But it is a, as much property owners, people that own and live within their own property, it's both, that we're speaking. It is both. It's both. It's both, and to cause all of us to have to pay $50 to be inspected when we can just take care of the people who are not doing the job. And people that are renting out properties, it's a business. That's yes, it is. a business expense. That's if I want to burn my wife and kids down, that's my taught me. <coughs> I'm not a business. We're trying to survive as a family and live. And I take care of my place. I think most people with families take care of their places. Yes. The people are running out of apartments to other people, making income. Mm -hmm. They should keep the damn place up. That's Absolutely. Right. That's, well, that's, that's all I got to and say. The, and the tenants that live there have every right to petition their government for a regress of that grievance and have it solved. They're not going to do that, Pat. They don't care. Who? No. The, they, the, they, tenant? They don't there. the tenant that's living there? Yeah. Yeah. And in all fairness, I, I will tell you that whatever rights a tenant has to, that also lead to their vote. When you have especially a building that has, you know, it's one thing if you live in a 50-unit building, you can have anonymity. If you live in a duplex or a four-unit building, you're not very anonymous whether you call our anonymous hotline or not, Pat. So part of the reason why, Mr. Brown, I'm sorry, you know, part of the reason why you have some of those programs is partially for that reason and partially for and in the one community where I have it, it wasn't it wasn't a blighted community. Some communities have them because they're on blight or they're on a verge or they don't want to get there. Other communities are very well ill on the side. They don't want to we're gonna fix a sore throat. We're not waiting to get cancer with our housing stock basically. And that's so what yeah, we have they took and, and the program ran at about a dollar thirty eight per month per unit for a man. And, we, but, and that's a policy okay. decision. I, I can just get yeah. you the documents and you guys can. We've, we've seen lots of those standards, Tom. So. Okay, motion to adjourn. So moved. Joe. Second. Thank you. Thank you, audience.